Okay, so uh, we're still in uh, chapter 8. This is section 3. Deal with nationalism. We're talking about unification uh, of a couple of major countries right here. We're still working with our uh, less than essential question. What was the result of the Congress of Vienna and Enlightenment thinking on Latin America, Europe in the 19th century, and the arts? Okay. So remember, this is coming. We're, the time we're talking about is after the Congress of Vienna, and uh, right before we talked uh, on the last section, we talked about the three political philosophies. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is nationalism. Okay, nationalism was also kind of a reaction to the Congress of Vienna. So we'll go ahead and talk about that. Now, I've got a map up here on the board just to start us off. Can't really see it very well on the iPad. Um, I can't see it at all. This is a map of Austria. I'm going to walk over here. I'm going to actually walk outside to see if I can still keep picking up my audio. So Austria was a very interesting country because Austria, uh, the Austrian Empire, was controlled by the Austrian Emperor. And there were at least 10 different languages and nationalities. So this was what was so difficult about being the Emperor of Austria. You had 10 different language peop groups, nationalities really to deal with. So it was very different being the Emperor of Austria because like if you were the ruler of France, it was pretty easy because France, the people that lived there spoke French. French and so they were French people. In Spain, people were Spanish and they spoke Spanish. Spanish. And in England, they were English and they spoke English. And during this time, the German people weren't all in one country, but they spoke German. And there was this idea that maybe they would want to be a Germany. Right, so they became Germany. All right, Italians, same thing. All right, so let's start off by talking about uh, how the Austrian Empire broke up. I know you've got your notes out. You've still got your PowerPoints. You're looking at that, but there's a few things you do want to write down. The breakup of the Austrian Empire, it was in 1866. When we say breakup, it wasn't like all ten nationalities just split off and formed their own countries. They split into two, into Austria and to Hungary. And like on this map here, forever from now on, we'll call this Austria-Hungary or the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Now, Austria had its own national government and Hungary had its own national government. So all those old nationalities... They were still within one of those two, but they were ruled by the same emperor. Okay? It was a Habsburg. So, uh, but that's what happened in 1866, because there were uprisings over the years, which we talked about in last section. Um, so these nationalities, they kind of wanted their own self-determination, autonomy, I guess. Okay, there's the map again. Uh, this looks really good on, your, on the PowerPoint, too, on your phone. So... Now, I know some of you all really like maps and you study these things, so you spend a lot of time with it. Let's talk about Russia real quick. Um, Russia went through uh, uh, a period of Russification. All right, so they were trying to make all the people that lived in these areas, they tried to make them Russian. And um, in trying to make them Russian, the other people didn't like it so much. And uh, so that was how nationalism kind of affected Russia, these different, like the, Pol the people in Poland, they didn't like Russification. And like Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, same type of things. I'll move here pretty quick. The Ottoman Empire continued to weaken. 1830, we talked about Greece. Uh, that was independent, but these other groups here started to get independent from the Ottoman Empire. You can see it there on the map. Now, let's talk about Italian unification. Italian unification. There was always been an area that we generally refer to as Italy, but there was never a country called Italy. And that sort of started during the Napoleonic period, but there was this push after that and after the Congress of Vienna to have this nationalism. Okay? Get that door, please. Thank you. All right. So in the north, there was a king in the north called King Victor Emmanuel II, and technically he was of Sardinia, but it was Piedmont Sardinia. He had a prime minister named Cavour. 
And Cavour, it was the leader of unification. So in the northern part of Italy here, see on this map, I see it shows up pretty good. Um, this is Sardinia, Piedmont, Sardinia. There were a bunch of Italians that lived here. They were being ruled by Austria. They didn't like that. So Piedmont, Sardinia fought a little war against Austria and got some of that land, and they were helped by the French. So gradually these other countries, very small countries in Italy, northern Italy, started to identify with Piedmont, Sardinia. Wanted, they wanted them to be part of their country, okay? Now, in the south, so you've got to know these two guys' names, King Victor Emmanuel II, Cavour. Giuseppe Garibaldi was a revolutionary in the south of Italy, in Sicily, started in Sicily. Now, he was a revolutionary, so he had riots and revolts and rebellions, and all of his buddies were called red shirts. Okay, so when they went to like have these riots and stuff, and then later they kind of formed an army, when they went to war and all that, they were called the red shirts. Anybody know why they were called red shirts? They wore red shirts. They wore red shirts. That's exactly right. So they wore red shirts. They were called the red shirts. But keep in mind, Garibaldi was from the south. Okay? All right. So he's from the south. Victor Emmanuel's from the north. And Cavour was from the north. And they both started controlling these areas. And they both kind of met in the middle of Italy. Now, some people at that time expected Garibaldi to, um, you know, kind of maybe almost even go to war to see who was going to be the ruler of Italy. Garibaldi was a revolutionary. He didn't want to rule, so he did a great job. He turned over his army to uh, Cavour and to King Victor Emmanuel, and then basically in 1870, we say that Italy was united in 1870. Question? What's the difference between red coats and red shirts? Well, they were just different. Red coats were the British. We've kind of talked about that before. Red shirts are shirts are shirts and coats are coats, so that's it. Okay. All right. Next, let's talk about Germany, okay? So, in Germany, you had a, co a country to the north called Prussia. And Prussia was very powerful, and they were the ones that eventually really led German unification, creating a Germany. A guy named Bismarck was the prime minister. William I was the king of Prussia. They were really cool. They had a cool military they had a cool country. They had a lot of stuff going for them. Now, you'll notice all these colors right here. These are all part of 39 individual German countries. Some of these really small ones, they started thinking Prussia was pretty cool and wanted to join their country of Prussia. So over the years, they did. Please always keep in mind, Prussia had a very powerful army. The other thing that the Prussians did, they did have a bit of a constitution and a little bit of liberal thinking there. They did allow the people a little bit of power. Now, <clears throat> okay, the other aspect of Prussia, what they had a nobility group. Their nobility was called the Yonkers, and it looks like Junkers when you look at the word. But they supported the king. Okay? Throughout history, sometimes kings don't get supported. Hold on a minute. Let's finish this. Just give me a couple minutes. All right. So, but Bismarck was the prime minister. He was the, as is, the master of realpolitik. Realpolitik was the politics of reality. He did not get tied down into what he believed. He just wanted Prussia to form a big Germany. It didn't matter if he had to be conservative, he was conservative. If he had to be liberal, he would be liberal. It didn't matter to him. He just wanted to have good foreign policy and further his country's power and prestige and all that. So we entered into some wars. Um, let's see what else here. Okay, so Prussia fought a couple of little wars. Uh, they went up here to Denmark, fought a little war, and took some land from Denmark. They went down here and fought a little land against, a little war against Prussia. Now all the times they went to war, Bismarck always found a way for the other guy to start it. So it never really looked like Prussia was starting the war, but he always wanted to make it look like that Prussia was being attacked or was being offended, and then they'd get their army and they'd go kill the other people. Okay? So they did that in Denmark. They did that with Prussia here in the Seven Weeks War. Okay? Again, winning that war. Then the big one for Prussia, the old Franco-Prussian War. Now, at this time, Prussia controlled almost everything in the north, 
And um, Bismarck tricked the French into um, offending Germany. He actually changed some words in a telegram or something to make it look like France was being, you know, mean and bad and all that. And then they went to war. Well, Germany was much quicker to mobilize the army, and the French were slow. So uh, the Prussians uh, beat the French, and you know how that goes. So all these Germans, they invaded France, and they met in Paris, or actually in Versailles, and formed a country called Germany, and it became the German Empire. So if you look over here, this is, if you look over here, this is the new German Empire. So after 1871, the Germans had a really cool empire. They thought they were cool because they had their own cool German Empire. Now, after all that was done, the, fr the French, they had to get another new government after that. The French were still crazy. And um, that's the unification story. I hope you all enjoyed that today. Story of German unification, Italian unification. Um, the nationalism stuff that went on in Russia, that went on in Austria, the uh, nationalism stuff that went on in uh, the Balkans with Greece. All that. Okay, y'all have a great weekend. It's Friday.